Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we explore all things related to investing in food and beverage stocks. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in great companies. If you love food and love stocks, you will definitely love this channel. In this video we will be doing an analysis of Mondelez and seeing if it would be a great addition to the Food Fund. Be sure to watch through the end of the video where I share my final thoughts on that. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. Cue the logo. Let's start with some background info on Mondelez. Mondelez a multinational confectionery, food, holding, beverage, and snack food company. Mondelez was actually founded in 2012 as a spin-off of Kraft Foods and is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. With operations in over 80 countries, Mondelez employs approximately 91,000 people worldwide. Some of the world's most popular snack brands, including Oreo cookies and Ritz crackers, are made by Mondelez. Yum. Now let's look at the price action. Starting with the one-year chart we see that Mondelez had a cager of about 14%. Zooming out to the 5 year chart we see that Mondelez had a cager of 11%. Mondelez price action has been steadily climbing over time but not outstanding returns. Now, let's take a look at the fundamentals. Gross margin is 37%. This is pretty good for a packaged food company. Revenue has compounded at around 6% over the past 5 years and has reached nearly $34.1 billion most recently. Good revenue growth and good gross margins make for a sound company. Looking at free cash flow we see a 0% cager over the last 5 years, while capex has decreased at a cager of 2%. So free cash flow has not changed in 5 years even though capex is slowly decreasing. Stock based compensation is increasing at around a 2% cager. This is somewhat worrisome as free cash flow growth is essential for healthy companies. Weighted average shares outstanding have been decreasing at about a 2% cager. Going from 1.49 billion shares in 2018 to 1.37 billion shares most recently, Mondelez has been very busy buying back shares. Given their stalled free cash flow, the share buybacks are the likely origin of the share price growth. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has increased from 4.8% in 2018 to 6.6% in 2023. Though the return on invested capital is fairly low, the increase over time points towards improving efficiency. However, this is at odds with the stagnant free cash flow. There may be something else going on here. Another favorite metric is cash conversion cycle, a measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from minus 39 days in 2018 to minus 32 days most recently, Mondelez has gotten a comparatively less efficient managing inventory. However, the negative cash conversion cycle indicates that the company still maintains a good degree of operating leverage. Last, let's explore Mondelez's debt. The net debt to EBITDA is good at 2.6 and has been declining from 3.8 in 2018. This is a very good sign that the company is slowly paying down debt relative to rising earnings. The fundamentals of Mondelez are pretty strong if we ignore the lack of free cash flow growth. In any event, should it be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Mondelez. It is a food company with a gross margin of 37%. The 5 year revenue per share cager is 8% and the 5 year free cash flow per share cager is 2%. This fits with what we know about the share buybacks driving per share growth at the company. A return on invested capital of 7% is pretty low but it has been increasing over time. Next, the cash conversion cycle of minus 32 days is good. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of 2.6 means that Mondelez could pay off all of their debts with a little over 2 and a half years of earnings. So from a fundamental standpoint, Mondelez is decent. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. Mondelez is actually fairly valued relative to the S&P 500 with a ratio of 1. 
the price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, is 2.6 which means that Mondelez is a little overvalued compared to its projected earnings growth. Mondelez has had good share price appreciation with solid revenue growth and share buybacks. The lack of organic free cash flow growth is disconcerting but I suppose it is acceptable to have share buybacks drive fundamentals until organic growth returns. The real question is, what kind of discount can be had for until organic free cash flow growth returns? All in all this is a decent company that would be really good when free cash flow returns. In the meantime, this is going on the watch list. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Mondelez and its lack of free cash flow growth? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.